Welcome aboard everybody, my name is Vic and today I'm going to teach you how to start building a computer step by step. I have all the components in here in order to start, so let's begin. This video is not sponsored by anyone, but by you my beautiful viewer that I know that I will press like on this video. So let's begin. The first step, we're going to start by preparing the case and we got to remove the front and back panel. We're going to remove these two screws. Then we're gonna remove the top fan. Then we're gonna go on the back of the case and remove the little box that comes inside of the case which contains all the screws for the motherboard and some other parts for the case. Then we're gonna put the case away. Then we gotta prepare the MSI MPG S570 motherboard. We gotta remove this plastic and remove the screws out of the socket CPU. We're gonna do that because we're gonna be installing a water cooler and you'll see that how we can do that. And then we gotta remove the M.2 heatsink in order to install the M.2 storage. We're gonna go with the 970 Evo from Samsung and install it on the M.2 slot. Just hold it a little bit and put in the screw. For the RAM, we're gonna go with the GSQ Triton C Neo. We have a total of 32 gigs and we're gonna install it in dual channel. I will recommend reading the motherboard manufacturer guide, that way you know which RAM it will support. And then we're gonna put back the screw for the M.2 heatsink. For the CPU, we're gonna go with the Ryzen 9 5900X. In order to install the CPU, you're gonna align the triangle from the back of the CPU into the motherboard triangle socket. You'll snuggle it a little bit and then close the latch. As you can see, there's a backplate left behind. We're gonna use this backplate in order to install the water cooler later on. Then we're gonna go back to the case because we gotta remove this plate in order to install the radiator and the fans for the water cooler. We gotta remove the plate and the fans that came with the case. And I will show you how we can pull the radiator back again with the fans. For the water cooler, we have a Kraken S63. We're gonna take it out of the box and see these amazing fans, but in this case, we're not using them. Just make sure that you read the instructions from the water cooler and the motherboard just to find out which plate you need and screws for the water cooler. In this case, we have an AM4 water cooler and that's what we're gonna use. This is how we put the washer inside of the screw. We're gonna line the fans that came with the case inside of the hole of the radiator. It's a little bit tough, but just make sure that you align it a little bit just by hand. And voila, now you're gonna install the radiator plate back into the case. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the motherboard inside of the case. Just make sure that you tilt it a little bit. And then we're gonna put in the screws. And just remember our friend the plate, the back plate guys. We're gonna put it on the back of the motherboard. And then we're gonna use the AM4 screws for the plate. The screws are needed in order to hold the water cooler pump. For the water cooler pump, we're gonna connect the USB connector and the power connector. Now, for the water cooler pump, we're gonna remove the plate that came with it and we're gonna install the one for the AM4 motherboard. You can actually rotate it in order to install it. Now we're gonna be putting in the screws in order to lock it. And now we're gonna just trace the cables to the back of the case. Now we're gonna install the NCXT Air RGB2. 
and we're going to install this fan on the top by putting the four screws and now we're rotating the case because we gotta remove the hard drive enclosure in order to install all the hard drives that we have then we're gonna slide in the hard drive into the hard drive enclosure or bay we have a total of two hard drives here we're gonna be putting in the screws just to lock them in that way they actually don't move out then we're gonna slide in the enclosure along with the hard drives and pull back the screws now we're gonna be installing an SSD by removing that enclosure in there and then we're gonna put the screws on the back of it And then we have the NCST power supply. And this power supply is fully modular, which can actually save you a lot of space when it comes out for the cables. We're gonna be putting in the motherboard pin cable or connector, the CPU cable, the SATA power cable, and the PCIe for the graphics card. And now we're gonna install the power supply into the case. Just make sure that the fan of the power supply is facing down. That way it can push out the air. And that's how it will look on the back of the case with the screws. Then we're gonna connect the extension cables for the power supply cables. Then we're gonna connect the SATA power to the water cooler pump, the hard drives, and the SSD. Now we're gonna trace the station cables to the front of the case along with the 3.0 USB and the audio cable and the front panel cable that came with the case. Then we're gonna connect the motherboard connector, the USB, the audio cable and the 3.0 USB along with the SATA cable too. Then we're gonna prepare the case in order to install the graphics card by removing the back plates. And for the graphics card, we have the biggest bottleneck ever. We have a GeForce 980 here, just because we're not able to find any current RTX graphics card on the market at a retail price, I would say. We're gonna install the graphics card into the PCIe lane and connect the PCI cables. And then we're gonna attach back the back panels. Then we're gonna attach the cable comms and the way they work you actually have to attach the first I'll say section and then the back section and this is how great they will look. Then we're gonna do the same for the motherboard cable and the CPU cable as well. Then we're gonna go to the biggest monster ever, cable management guys. We're gonna destroy this and you're gonna watch how I do it. You gotta be really patient when it comes out for cables. First, you're gonna attach them by group and then you're gonna use the zip ties to lock them in. Once I have the zip ties in place, I also use velcro straps. The velcro straps will allow you, in the case of the future that you have to remove one of the cables or change one of the parts, and that way you can damage the cables too. And then look how beautiful this cable management looks. It's not perfect. But we try our best, and trust me, you can achieve this by being patient. That's all the key to this. If you want to learn about patience in cable management and technology, just make sure that you subscribe. I'm gonna teach you more. Well, that's the video for today and if you learned something new remember to press like on this video and subscribe that way more people can find this video and learn more about technology that being said see you next time